first in high definition from the station on your side this is wavy news 10. fire crews arriving from all around the country to fight an out of control blaze in the great dismal swamp hear what some of them had to say about battling this blaze on the front lines several local 7-elevens hit by robbers could the crimes be connected we'll show you how they're working to keep customers and workers safe Plus, former delegate Phil Hamilton learns his punishment for extortion and bribery. Wish none of it had ever happened. Hear what else he told Ted on your side after the sentencing. First, though, we're starting with breaking news. This comes from our jam cams. Getting a look at 264 westbound. This is near I-64, an overturned truck. Yeah, it's an armored truck there. You might be able to make it out there on the left-hand side of your screen, right behind the fire truck. You see that long uh, black-looking thing there. We believe that is the armored truck overturned, and it looks like the fire truck is blocking uh, one lane of traffic there on 264. And it's westbound and down to one lane going into Norfolk. We're going to continue to follow this story and get more information on how this all happened during our 90 minutes of news. Meanwhile, the Great Dismal Swamp Wildfire, that is now burning across 6,000 acres. And Ted on your side wanted to put that number in perspective for you, and we figured out that is bigger than the town of Smithfield. Firefighters say the flames are burning anything in their path as the smoke continues to hover around Hampton Roads. Sagay Galindo is tracking the winds, moving the smoke, but we begin team coverage with Surrey Crow live in Suffolk. Surrey? Stephanie, we're out here at the Suffolk Airport, and I can tell you the thick is so, this smoke, excuse me, is so much thicker than it was yesterday when we were at the command incident post. And as this fire continues to grow, so do the resources. We've now got fire crews coming from all over the country to try and get a handle on this thing. The fire burning in the Great Dismal Swamp is now a calling card for fire crews from all over the country. Resources are continually growing every day. Now more than 200 firefighters are in Suffolk to battle this blaze. They're loading up on water for the fire and for themselves as they head straight into the heat of the battle. Dubbed the Lateral West Fire, the blaze has scorched almost 6,000 acres of the refuge. It's considered a type 1 incident. In simple terms, this fire is a big deal. A type 1 incident is, is of national consequence. You know, it has a lot of uh, attention on it, and so we're able to pull in resources from across the country as needed. For Tracy Farley, home is Arkansas, but her travels as part of the top tier fighting crews are part of the job. She handles the logistics while crews like these are in charge of putting the fire out. The peat and dry conditions in the refuge are making this fire extremely difficult to douse. Farley says a swamp fire is a whole different animal than a mountain fire, for instance just a really different scenario in a swamp fire. The, the vegetation is, is thick, you know, very intense. So the goal for these fire crews is simple, safety first and then putting this difficult fire to rest. And as we mentioned, they really are having a tough time with this blaze. Coming up at 6, we'll explain just why the fire in the Great Dismal Swamp is proving to be such a challenging blaze. Live in Suffolk, Surrey Crow, 10 on your side. So where is all that smoke now and where is it going next? The question we've asked for the past week, meteorologist Sagay Galindo standing by in the Super Doppler 10 Weather Center at the controls. What do you have for us? Well, we've got a predominantly east-southeasterly flow and that's going to continue to just carry those smoke, uh, the smoke into interior sections of the south side as well as interior sections of eastern North Carolina all the way up toward the metro Richmond area. So it is going to be a problem pretty much uh, throughout the night tonight and into tomorrow as well. Some of the visibilities have been really low. They've come up a bit in Franklin, but you can see towards South uh, Hill and also toward Farmville got the very low visibilities in place and air quality alert is in effect through tomorrow midnight. And this is a cold purple and uh, we normally don't see it quite this high, but when we get it this high, it is unhealthy for everyone across the area, especially with respiratory issues. So you want to really avoid all strenuous outdoor activities. We'll talk more about uh, the smoke and we'll take a look at some relief in the form of some rain that potentially could help things out by the end of the weekend. I'll have the details on that coming up. And I've taken the liberty of calling up wavy.com here on the desk. You will find a photo gallery featuring, featuring pictures of the Great Dismal Swamp wildfire. I'm going down the gallery right now. They were sent in to report it at wavy.com. So remember, you can also go to our Facebook page and see pictures posted by 10 on your side viewers or send yours to report it at wavy.com. 
Well, there have been so many holdups at 7-Eleven stores over the past several days that police are now looking for a connection. Virginia Beach, Portsmouth, and Chesapeake police are all comparing notes, trying to see if these cases are related. 10 on your side's Ava Hurdle joins us live now from a store on Airline Boulevard in Portsmouth that was held up early Wednesday. Ava? Well, that's right, Stephanie. In fact, these robberies overnight have involved two suspects, suspects wearing masks who demand money. So far, no one's been hurt. It was 1.35 a.m. Friday that Chesapeake police got a hold-up alarm from this 7-Eleven store at the corner of Sparrow and Providence Roads. A pair of armed masked men demanded money, got it, and ran away. I'm really surprised because it's a, it's a lively area. Just across the street for 31 years, Ron Horton has operated Ron's Hot Dogs back when they cost customers 79 cents apiece. By his own account, he sold about six million since then. Seen the area grow with young families moving in, but says this robbery is out of the ordinary here. You come out uh, anywhere from 10 to 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, it's a very lively area. The police are constantly making a presence, especially in our parking lot. They sit over here um, and constantly surveilling the area. Just after 1 a.m. Wednesday, Portsmouth police were called to this 7-Eleven off Airline Boulevard for a robbery. Police say the suspects jumped over the counter, took money, and grabbed some cigarettes on the way out. A similar report an hour later at a 7-Eleven off Oceana Boulevard in Virginia Beach. Luckily, no one was hurt. A spokesperson for the stores, Margaret Chabri, told us, quote, 7-Eleven is working closely with law enforcement agencies to ensure a safe working environment and shopping environment and to assist in the identification of the robbers. The company does have surveillance cameras in its stores. Horton says the video system is a great asset along with a large customer base. We have a lot of activity and a lot of uh, visually you can see inside the building with all the glass and plus we try to close before dark. Now police have not made a connection between the cases. If you can help them find the suspects, you're asked to call the crime line. That number, one triple eight, lock you up. We're live in Portsmouth, Ava Hurdle, 10 on your side. Former state delegate Phil Hamilton will spend nine and a half years in prison for extortion and bribery. We broke today's sentencing on wavy.com and a story you'll see only on 10 tonight. Andy Fox spoke to Hamilton about the sentence. For 21 years in the General Assembly, former Newport News delegate Phil Hamilton built a powerful career. Today, he and his wife, Kim, take a lonely walk to federal court in Richmond to find out how long he will spend in prison on charges of bribery and extortion. In the sadness, what have you discovered? Um, how well grounded I am as a person. What is the pain that you feel? Well, I mean, clearly it's the pain to the family. Prosecutors used an email trail showing Hamilton used his powerful position in the General Assembly to get $500,000 for a teacher quality and educational leadership center at ODU. Hamilton then went to the General Assembly and got the money and then got a $40,000 a year job to run it. U.S. Attorney Neil McBride. Phil Hamilton uh, used his significant influence as a 20-year state legislator to extort officials at Old Dominion University in order to get a job. Federal Judge Henry Hudson gave Hamilton nine and a half years in prison. Well, obviously I regret what occurred. Um, you know, I wish none of it had ever happened. Hamilton's fall from grace, devastating. I like for them to remember the good things that I've done. Been a strong advocate for the uh, mentally and physically uh, challenged and disabled. Uh, I think I added a lot to the quality of public education in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Very proud of the years of service that I had both as a public school educator and, and as a legislator. Hamilton plans to appeal the sentence. He must turn himself in September 19th. Hamilton could have received 15 and a half years, but thanks in part to friends who spoke on his behalf, he got less than that. Tonight at 6, we hear from some of those friends who still think Hamilton got too much time. I'm Andy Fox. That story, tonight at 6. And this is a day of mourning as we remember 30 fallen heroes. The declaration came from Governor Bob McDonald after insurgents shot down their helicopter in Afghanistan. 15 of those who died were Navy SEALs based right here.
flags across the Commonwealth were ordered at half staff in honor of those killed. The governor also asked Virginians to donate to charities that help the families. The special operations people are always called to do such dangerous missions that uh, when they lose, uh, lose so many folks at the same time, we need to be able to honor their memories. We need to support their families. A 10 on your side viewer sent us these pictures of a tribute on the beach. Tonight at 6, hear how local radio stations honored our fallen heroes. And then, not making the grade. A recent progress report says more than half of the schools in Hampton Roads are failing. I ask educators what they're going to do to change that. And with the recent wild ride on Wall Street, you may be worried about your money, but we're on your side with advice from the experts on what to do. And a 10 on your side consumer alert why you should check your hall closet lamps and light fixtures for these bulbs. A victory tonight for opponents of President Obama's health care overhaul plan. A federal appeals court struck down the requirement that virtually all Americans must buy health insurance or face penalties. But an appeals court and three federal judges have upheld the rest of the law. Experts say the debate ultimately will be decided by the U.S. Supreme Court. We're on your side with a consumer alert. Philips Lighting is recalling about 2 million light bulbs because the glue might not work and the glass globe can fall out of the socket. Now, this recall involves Philips Energy Saver and Marathon Classic Compact Fluorescent Dimmable Reflector Lamps. The affected models are R30, R40, and PAR38. Now, if you don't still have your boxes, to look at that. The model numbers are printed on the white ceramic area of the base of the lamp. Hundreds of bulbs have broken and several people have gotten hurt. General Motors is recalling thousands of cars. GM says a power steering fluid hose in the 2012 Chevy Impala can get too close to the catalytic converter. Now, the hose can melt and fluid can leak and that can start a fire. GM is also recalling 2012 Buick LaCrosse models to fix a software problem that runs a computer that controls the brakes. Now the current software might not detect a malfunctioning sensor. If that sensor fails, it could change the way the car handles and can cause you to crash. We're on your side watching Wall Street. We'll have the closing numbers plus the surprising safe place. Financial experts say you can put your cash to avoid the stock market seesaw. Now we're going to look at nature, a dark side. Storm chasers catch a tornado on tape. We'll tell you if this one caused okay, any cool. damage. Thanks. Bye. Watching Wavy News 10 at 5 with Tom Shad, Nicole Libus, and Super Doppler 10 Chief Meteorologist Don Slater. Back to that breaking news on the interstate we showed you at the top of the newscast. An overturned armored truck on 264 westbound before the 64 overpass. This is a live look from our wavy traffic jam cams. You can see fire and rescue crews on the scene. Traffic down to one lane westbound into Norfolk. You might want to avoid this area. It is safe to say a lot of stock traders are saying TGIF. For the second day in a row, stocks closed higher, capping off one of the most volatile weeks ever on Wall Street. Bans on short selling in some European markets calmed some investors' fears for today, and you see the result. The Dow up 125 points to close about a percentage point higher. NASDAQ and S&P also eking out short gains. The ride, though, has been a short, bumpy one for most of us this week. Now, you'll be looking to take maybe the off-ramp and park some of your cash. Yeah, the place now offering the best rate of return might surprise you. Ten on your side's Chris Clackham explains. In trying to decide how to best protect the cash you no longer want exposed to the vulnerabilities of the stock market, you might want to consider putting it back in the bank. Yes, the bank. Banks are trying to get people who are nervous about the stock market to place their money with them. And in order to do that, they've created new incentives and tweaked many of these bank accounts to make them more appealing to individual consumers. Turns out, under new federal guidelines, banks are now required to have bigger cash reserves before they can do what's most profitable for them, make loans. 
in order to get those reserves, those cash reserves, they need money from consumers. So that is why they create incentives. So now CD and money market rates are higher than they've been in years. And some banks are even back to offering 3% returns on checking accounts. You make various transactions, withdrawals, deposits into your checking account, then this 3% return might be the easiest you can gain in this market. Smart Money's Anna Marie Andriotis says it's not just the big banks offering the best deals. Community banks, credit unions, local banks, they're offering really great rates right now with very few fees because they're trying to compete with their bigger banks. Just ensure, she says, that all deposits are federally insured. Chris Clackham, NBC News. Now, in high definition, your Super Doppler 10 forecast with meteorologist Sergey Galindo. We've had plenty of problems with the smoke for today, and it's going to continue to be an issue as we go into the weekend. want to show you what's going on right now. We have an air quality alert in effect. It's at a code purple. That's the highest grade that you can get uh, when it comes to air quality alerts. And you can see that's for Suffolk, points towards Southampton County, Olive White, on up toward uh, Surrey. Sussex County, uh, north toward the Metro Richmond area, and also extends toward portions of uh, Ahoski on toward Northampton and Halifax counties, as well as Bertie and Gates and Hertford counties in North Carolina, also included in that. And again, this goes until tomorrow midnight. So tomorrow is going to be another day where you're probably going to be smelling that smoke uh, throughout much of the day. So a cold purple means that this is unhealthy for just about everybody, especially people who suffer with respiratory problems. So you really want to avoid all the very strenuous outdoor activity, especially as we uh, head into the day for tomorrow. I know it's the weekend, but you want to really take it easy in those areas. And you can really see on the wind forecast here, the flow is really not going to change all that much. We're going to really see that flow predominantly out of the southeast throughout much of the weekend. And this is even as we head towards 7 o'clock on Saturday. Now, we do get a few changes. Things get a little bit more southerly as we start to head towards Sunday night as a low pressure starts to march in across the area. But again, the smoke is going to be real pronounced uh, tonight and into the day for tomorrow tomorrow. We certainly could use some wet weather and you can see here on live Super Doppler 10 most of the showers and storms down toward our south and west and they're going to stay out of the area for most of us for tonight. Maybe a spotty shower uh, creeping toward uh, interior sections of eastern North Carolina tonight but most of us are just going to see partly cloudy skies with temperatures falling around 71 degrees but our next big rainmaker is going to be an area of low pressure uh, that's already starting to see some showers and storms develop associated with that. That's going to march out of the west and push into our area as we head toward uh, Saturday night and into Sunday. But you notice as we uh, look toward future track for some wet weather again, it's mostly going to be dry for tonight and into tomorrow. Now tomorrow could be maybe an isolated shower or storm early in the day, but our best chances will arrive uh, mostly by Saturday night. Again, could squeeze out a few showers before that, but again, our best chances will arrive late in the day Saturday and into the day on Sunday. And you can see here some of that uh, widespread soaking rain starts to spread our way by the noon hour on Sunday, and that continues through the evening hour. So as we look for at the forecast for tonight, upper 70s by 9 o'clock, 74 by midnight, 3 o'clock, 72 degrees. Again, some areas of smoke around even for tonight and especially as we go into the day for tomorrow. We'll look for temperatures in the mid to upper 80s and again, rain chances late Saturday, pretty much through early Monday and we certainly could use it. Temperatures are going to be very pleasant though throughout the next several days. We're staying in the 80s all week long. We'll dry things out Tuesday through about Thursday and we'll look for more rain chances on Friday with temperatures around 86 degrees. Well, they admit to participating in the mayhem in London. Basically, I saw the opportunity, so I went to it, innit? Hear their motivation for this violence and see how Scotland Yard is tracking down the rioters and looters. And then a shark attack in North Carolina waters. That's three this summer alone. We'll tell you what happened just before this recent one. We're always fascinated by these pictures. A summer storm sent tornado chasers into Nebraska farmland. Another amazing shot, a funnel cloud that these storm chasers found last night. It later spun to the ground and moved along the fields there and no reports of damage. Just an ominous look as you drive down the road of a sea of gray and green. Incredible. A London police have arrested more than 1,500 people in the aftermath of violence that broke out there last weekend. There are the police raiding homes of suspected ringleaders and looters. Scotland Yard is posting surveillance camera images on social websites like Facebook, 
Twitter, Flickr, and YouTube. It's a so-called name and shame campaign to match faces and names. Police are using high-tech facial recognition software to remove masks and hoods hiding suspects' faces. Admitted looters blame the widespread violence on a lack of support from the government and a need to help their families. Obviously, I saw opportunity, so I went to it, innit? I've done this, basically, to provide for my family, innit? Like, I've got some stuff for my son, yeah? And I've got some stuff for me. Have any of you felt any kind of bad feelings or remorse about what you've done since the, 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 the looting? Let me ask you first. No, I'm... I'm alright, you know. It just feels like a normal day to me. It's normal. It's nothing. Because the government, they're not helping no one out except for the rich people. They don't care for us. They just leave us on the blocks to do whatever we do. Five people have died since all this started. Your tire troubles could be a thing of the past? Really? How one tire maker says it's keeping you safer and saving you money. And then could Casey Anthony end up back behind bars? We're on your side with the latest in the case from a Florida courtroom. How about this? Goodyear says it has a tire that inflates itself. The tire measures its own pressure, and if it gets low, pumps itself up while it rolls along. Everything that makes it work is contained in the tire. The self-inflating tire would be safer because it would never fa fail or fall, rather, to dangerously low inflation levels. Underinflated tires decrease gas mileage by 3%, so this could save fuel as well. No word, though, on when this new tire will be available and, more importantly, how much it will cost. Stay with us. Wavy News 10 at 530 starts right now.